Our next speaker is paediatric gastroenterologist, Dr. Richard Muir, speaking today on a little of what Professor Pete Smith touched on, um, the eosinophilic esophagitis, um, often known as EE. If you haven't come across them yet outside, the support group for parents with children that suffer from that condition um, are here today. They're called Aussie. They're wonderful, and their president, Sarah Gray, is here today also. Um, do, if you uh, are likely to be um, dealing with one of those children, get some information about that organisation. They're wonderful and they're, they are a great support to parents dealing with that specific condition. Um, so please make welcome to speak a bit further about it, uh, Dr Richard Muir, who's here today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So today I'll be talking about eosinophilic esophagitis, or as doctors we all like our acronym, so EOE. Um, it's an important disease to recognise in the paediatric population, uh, especially in some of your patients with uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease which don't respond to standard therapy. Uh, Pete's given you a good rundown, so you'll all be experts by the end of the talk. Eosinophilic esophagitis, or we'll just call it EOE for now, um, it's basically it's a clinical, clinical pathological disease, which basically means people have clinical symptoms, esophageal dysfunction, so dysphagia, or obviously the biggest complication of the disease, food bolus impaction. Um, and on biopsy, when we have a look, they have a predominant eosinophilic infiltration on biopsies, more than 15 per high power field. Um, at this point, it's important to recognise that eosinophils are commonly found throughout the gastrointestinal tract, but their presence in the esophagus is abnormal and indicates disease. In eosinophilic esophagitis, uh, the eosinophilic infiltration is in isolation, so only occurring in the esophagus. Um, our understanding of this disorder is still evolving in that it's only be recently been recognised in the last 20 years or so, although it was first described in 1978. Patients were initially thought to have gastroesophageal reflux disease, but they noted there was a subset of patients who basically were quite atopic. They had normal pH probes, so no suggestion of gastroesophageal reflux disease, um, and they weren't uh, responding to standard therapy. 